everyone. My name is Evelyn Hayward, and I am a junior at the Lincoln Academy, as well as an intern at the Welty Environmental Center. My GLOBE project is about soil conditions and how they affect the growth of different plant species along the Rock River wetlands in Big Hill Park. While exploring my thoughts on what area I wanted to work in, wetlands immediately stood out to me. Wetland indicator status relays the probability of a plant to occur within freshwater or saltwater habitats. There are five different wetland status indications, obligate, facultative wetland, facultative, facultative upland, as well as upland. Obligate plants almost always occur in a wetland and they cannot thrive anywhere else. They rely on the extremely moist soil. Alternately, species considered as upland almost never occur in wetlands. They do not rely on any special conditions held within a wetland. After learning of these classifications, my research question arose. How do soil conditions affect native plants near the Rock River and Bay Park? With that stated, my data collection started. The six total sites were surveyed from October to November of 2023. My sites were determined by placing a flag at 0 meters, 10 meters, and 20 meters. Each point was placed at a 20 meter distance behind those three flags. Using the GLOBE protocol for soil moisture, I removed about 100 grams of soil from two depths of soil, 0 to 5 centimeters and 8 to 12 centimeters. This soil was stored in metal tins and were placed under a heat lamp for a period for a period of 18 to 36 hours until dry. Along with this practice, I also used the GLOW protocols for soil temperature. For this, I used a thermometer to take the temperature of the soil at five centimeters and 10 centimeters respectively. The findings for soil conditions previously mentioned were both reported on a pre-made data sheet. As seen in image one, the final piece of data that was taken from each data point was a sample of each plant growing within the sample area. Quadrat square was used to standardize the process of plant sampling. Plants growing immediately outside the square were not considered. Like the sample of the sharp rice cut grass included in image two, all plants collected were individually labeled to help with organization and identification. The samples collected from transect point A had the highest number of obligate wetland plant species, as shown in figure one. Throughout my study, the 23 plant species identified included 10 obligate species. The second highest classification of species found was facultative wetland plants, of which there were seven identified. With this information, it could be reasonably concluded that about 74% of the species identified would find it very difficult or even impossible to survive in other areas of Big Hill Park. Throughout my data collection period, no invasive species were found in any of my six sites. The soil moisture was, as expected, at its highest within transect point A, as it was the closest to the river itself. As shown in figure two, the data reading for soil moisture varied from a little over zero grams per gram to just under six. Interestingly, the soil moisture content got lower as I surveyed deeper into the soil. I didn't expect this. Throughout the data recorded in figure one, the transect points with the higher moisture content produced a higher number of obligate and facultative wetland plants. I would love to see future research done into the density and growth rate of wetland plants, especially along the Rock River. Deciphering exactly how many wetland species call Big Hill Park their home, as well as their ideal growing conditions, could, in turn, help other wetlands see growth in the future. My study and data collection faced some limitations in the forms of time and specific location. Data was collected over a period of two months, so some days had overnight precipitation beforehand while others did not. Although, we tried to negate this symptom through recording if there was any overnight precipitation on my data sheet. Along with that, Soil samples were much more difficult to collect along transect point C, specifically points 2C and 3C, due to human contact and soil compaction due to walking. Through these challenges, I still did my best to provide the most accurate and conclusive data that I could. During my time at the Welty Environmental Center, I, at first, found myself overwhelmed with everything that needed to be done. Once I had a clear passion with an end goal, I found myself having the greatest time mucking around in the wetlands every Monday and Wednesday. I gained plenty of practical, real-world skills that I will definitely be using in college as well as throughout my own professional career. And with that, I would like to thank the National Science Foundation for funding, as well as Michael Narado at the University of Wisconsin-Madison Center for Climatic Research at the Nelson Institute. I would also like to thank Theo Felger, Harley Moniak, as well as Darian Becker for logistical support and field assistance. Thank you for your time.